Kohala kua mo'o, nai ole's race to save a king. Author, e kaulele a nai ole kawai ai'a. Art illustrator, Aaron kawai ai'a. And mo'olelo by Walter and Luana kawai ai'a. Okay class, said my homeroom teacher. Today's assignment is to learn about your inoa, or name. It has been said that the most prized possession of any Hawaiian is his inoa. Kumu told us that a name is more treasured than a woven mat, a man's malo, or even a chief's ahu'ula, made of the finest feathers. When you go home today, she said, ask your ohana about how you receive your inoa and why it's important to you. Just then, the bell rang. Remember, your homework is due tomorrow, she said. As I stepped through the doorway at home, Grandpa was playing his ukulele. I got right to my homework. Can you tell me about my name? I know Uncle K gave it to me, but what does it mean? Is there a story behind it? Hey, there is. Come, come. Sit with me. Let's travel back in time to the days of your great ancestors, Kahopulani and Chief Naiole. Your name, Kekolele a Naiole, means the flight of Naiole. Naiole was a great chief of Kohala on Hawaii Island. His name Naiole means without shortness of breath, and he was known as a great runner. As I listened to this exciting story, I could feel myself being transported back to a historic time and place, the Kapa'akai Kokoiki Kohala where Kamehameha the Great was born. It was a stormy night in the month of Ikawa during the reign of Alapa'inui. A chiefess of Hawaii, Kekui Apuiva, gave birth to a baby boy. It was foretold by a kahuna that this keiki would become a warrior king and unite the Hawaiian Islands. Signs accompanied the Ali's birth. Crashing waves, peals of thunder, Forked lightning, heavy winds, and torrential rains. A great star with a tail of white fire streaked across the heavens. The powerful Alapa Inui and other chiefs of Hawaii Island heard of this prophecy and were not pleased. This child would prove their downfall. Death for the newborn be the only solution. But among other chiefs, another plan was made to save the newborn. Immediately after the birth, Naiole, the great chief of the Halawa district, would take the baby and flee into the hills. He would then deliver the babe safely to Kaha'opulani, his half-sister and first cousin, the chiefess Kikuiapuiva. So, on that stormy night, Kamehameha, was born. Naioli took the newborn, wrapped in soft kapa cloth, and began the race to save a king. Naioli's destination was Avini. Running with careful speed, he crossed rugged trails, dense forests, swollen rivers, and steep valleys to avoid being captured by Alapai's men. Naioli hid in caves and received help from people in different villages along the way. As Naioli began the trek, he reached Pu'umaunakeo, a small hill near Mo'okiniheo. He hid there until it was safe and then continued to the first village, Ho'eo, which means to arrive. The people of Ho'eo were waiting anxiously for this blessing to come. They provided Naioli with safe shelter for a brief moment, then sent him and the babe on their way. Naioli's next stop was Havi, a village name meaning to suffer a famine. Because there was no wet nurse, the infant began to cry from hunger. Back at Kokoiki, a worried mother, Chiefess Kikui Apuiva, awaited news of her newborn son. By this time, Alapai's warriors discovered that the baby had been taken. They gathered their forces, searched the surrounding area, and arrived at Havi only to find 
that Nioli and the child were already gone. The raging storm made their search nearly impossible. Chief Nioli took refuge near Honomaka'u, an area named for seeking shelter from fear. He hid in a place sheltered by trees. The rain and muddy trails made it difficult to continue, but Nioli kept going. As dawn approached, Nioli came to the village of Kapa'au, meaning the place where the kapa went swimming. The streams were swollen because of the heavy rains. When Nioli crossed the swirling water, the baby's kapa got drenched and lost in the current. Nioli then stopped at Halaula, a place named for the severe punishment Olapai's warriors would face if they didn't find the child. Not fulfilling the king's orders was considered a hala, or sin, that would cost the men their ula, or blood. Leaving Halaula, Nioli reached his lands, Halava. There he was safe to rest and catch his breath among his own people. The baby was doing well and had enough breath and strength in him to continue the journey, hence the name Alava, meaning enough breath. From there, Nioli ran to the village of Makapala, named after the warriors' futile attempts to find the newborn. As the men became weary and desperate, their maka or eyes became pala, swollen and ripe like red hala. Nioli kept running until he reached Pololu Valley. Avini was still in the distance. He checked to see if Alapai's men were near. The trek down into the valley was dangerous, but the tireless Nioli had vowed to complete this important mission, so he ran toward his final destination. After traveling day and night, through miles of rugged mountains and deep valleys, Nioli and the baby Kamehameha finally reached Avini. Nioli's half-sister, Kaha'opulani, was waiting for them. She quickly nursed and hid the newborn. As the baby slept, Alapai's warriors arrived and saw Kaha'opulani with her own baby girl. Dejected, the warriors left. The race to save a king was over. Naiole had fulfilled his kuleana, and the infant Kamehameha was safe. And so your name, Kekaulele a Naiole, is to remind you of Naiole's flight. If not for the courage and devotion of your Kohala ancestors, the life of Kamehameha the Great would have ended at birth. Mahalo, Grandpa, for telling me about my Inoa. I'm going to write this all down for my homework. I think my kumu will like it. Hi, Grandma will help you. Your name carries our family mo'olelo, our stories, our most valuable possessions. Other families also have their own mo'olelo. We keep the stories alive so we can live worthy of our great ancestors' respect. Are there more mo'olelo? Aye, there are more mo'olelo, and those stories are for another time. Mm -hmm.